This is August Dennis Sports Scene, a weekly update on Viking Athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Now, let's catch up on the action and excitement of Augustana Athletics as we roll our Augustana Sports Update for this week. Last Saturday afternoon, Coach Jerry Yashevsky's Augustana football team moved their record to 2-1 and one on the season as they shut out Bemidji State 24 to nothing at Kirkaby Over Stadium. In the first quarter, linebacker Stephen Miller blew up a Beavers option play, causing a fumble that the Vikings turned into a 30-yard field goal by Lucas Wayman. Then late in the first half, Miller stepped up again as he blocked a Bemidji punt, which Tegan Brown scooped up and raced to pay dirt on an 18-yard touchdown run. Augustana went into halftime with a 17-0 lead following a pretty 26-yard touchdown pass from redshirt freshman quarterback Trey Hyde to tight end Nick Lee. The final score of the game for the Vikings came on a 13-yard touchdown strike from Hyde to senior wideout Noah Heisman. Dejan Newell led Augustana's rushing attack as he picked up 50 yards on 12 carries. Trey Hyde completed 15 of 28 passes for 159 yards with no interceptions. Noah Heisman was the top receiver as he had six receptions for 60 yards. The Augustana offense had no turnovers during the game. The Vikings defense had an outstanding day as they limited the Beavers to just 208 yards of total offense. Augustana had four quarterback sacks and limited Bemidji State to just four third down conversions. Linebacker Brandon Moore led the way with nine tackles and half a sack. Nate Kirby had six tackles and 1.5 sacks with Jake Lee making five tackles and adding a sack. Joel Slinden also had five tackles and half a sack. In women's soccer, Coach Brandon Barkas' team pushed their record to 5-1 and one on the season and 2-0 and in the NSIC as the Vikings knocked off MSU Moorhead 6-1 and Northern State 3-1 at Morstead Field. In the win over Moorhead, Alicia Olerking paced Augustana with two goals and one assist. Marin Wirth also scored two goals with Cara Bartles and Haley Berner each scoring one. In the victory over Northern, Alicia Overking, Stephanie Stevens, and Marin Wirth kicked in goals for the Vikings. Ashley Limmer played solid at goalkeeper in both big wins. In volleyball, Coach Ashley Buckley's team came out in the short end of matches against Southwest Minnesota State and the University of Sioux Falls. Over the two matches, Courtney Yisker led the way with 38 kills, while Holly Halfmeyer had 32. Brittany Check paced Augustana and Diggs with 36, with Marissa Johnson dishing out 108 assists for an average of 12 per game. The Vikings now have an 8-2 record with a 0-2 mark in NSIC action. In women's golf, coach Peggy Kirby's team finished second at the Concordia Invitational in St. Paul. Maggie Leland and Marissa Toivonen both shot 36 hole scores of 155 to lead the team. And in women's tennis, Katie Jesperson and Jessa Richards had a great run at the USTA Central Region Championships in Springfield, Missouri. Katie and Jessa won four doubles matches before dropping the championship match to the doubles team from Southwest Baptist. That's our sports update for this week. When we come back, we'll talk Augustana football with Coach Jerry Oshevsky. Stay with us. Augustana Sports Scene is brought to you by Sanford Health, improving the human condition, and by Mid-Continent Communications, the connection that counts. Augustana Sports Scene is also brought to you by Light Touch, photography for a lifetime, and by Graham Automotive, real service, real value. Audi A4 drivers have spoken. And they rank the A4 highest in total quality index in its class. Experience the new Audi A4 at your local dealer today. Exceeding expectations. Getting better every day. It doesn't happen by chance. Preparation pays off. So the only question to ask yourself is, am I better today than I was yesterday? Exceed yesterday. 
Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Have you noticed more and more fees showing up in your account with your bank? Take a look at your statement. You may be surprised. At Sioux Empire Federal Credit Union, the only surprise you'll find is how few fees there are. Imagine applying for your next loan or setting up your account with the peace of mind that as a member owner, you call the shots, including what fees to charge. So why let extra banking fees gobble up your money? Get your account and your loan from the place you own. Sioux Empire Federal Credit Union, federally insured by NCUA. Combine Midco Net Extreme Wideband, the region's fastest internet, and Mid-Continent Video with TV everywhere, and take shows you normally watch here and watch them anywhere, anytime. So turn your tablet into a TV, take CNN with you, catch the Cartoon Network up here. Turn any screen in the house into a Mid-Continent screen. Mid-Continent Video with TV everywhere and the flawless streaming performance of Midco Net Extreme Wideband make Mid-Continent the connection that counts. Hi everybody, I'm Bill Gross, Athletic Director at Augustana College. And joining me on Augustana Sports Scene is Coach Jerry Oshevsky. Coach OJ, the Vikings uh, last Saturday afternoon returned to Kirkaby Over Stadium and uh, had really a great football game, came out on top against the Beavers, 24 to nothing. Your thoughts? I'm extremely pleased. Uh, you know, there's a disappointing trip to mine out the week previously, and, and we talked about redemption all week. The kids had a wonderful week of practice. I thought Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday were as sharp as we've been all year, to be honest with you. Uh, so I'm just pleased with how we started and how we finished the game. Offensively, we're still growing a little bit. Defensively, we didn't get all the turnovers that we've been getting, but we did force a, a lot of punts. I think there's 10 punts in the game. So just a, a great compliment for each other. Well, the Vikings were really sharp and crisp for those of you who uh, saw the football game, and uh, I think the most impressive thing was uh, our defense uh, as they uh, threw a shutout against the Beavers, and uh, it was a great performance. Yeah, as a former defensive coordinator, shutouts are hard to come by at any level, at any time, and I thought our defense did a great job. I really did. You know, we played, we talked about attack angles, make sure our pursuit was right from the backside, doing your job, and they did it every snap. And that, it just, we continue to grow and get better defensively. Offensively, we, we created long fields um, for them to have to score on. Bemidji's been living on turnovers uh, defensively. They've mm -hmm. scored some points and, and then short fields of production of their defense and they didn't get that on Saturday. They had to earn you know, the field yardage for which they got. And special teams played its role again too, creating long fields and some turnovers and, right. and a score. Right. Well, uh, you know, we've, we're covering kind of everything here. Let's, let's go back to the defense and just talk a little more about uh, your overall feeling about how it's going and some of the people who are standing out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think our down four have been playing really well. I think Jake Lee and Joel Slendon right now are, are separating themselves from this league and, and as playmakers uh, and really creating some havoc up front so our linebackers can make plays and our linebackers are playing exceptional. I believe we're getting better every week at corner as well. Uh, and Devin Elber and, and Justin Brown, who we converted from safety, continues to improve on a weekly basis. And their safety play led by Thomas, of course, um, and Chad has made some plays uh, as well in the secondary, continues to grow. So I'm just pleased how it's coming together. The kids are really gelling together. They're starting to understand how to fit one another. Um, and they're a confident unit right now, and we're going to need to be on Saturday. Well, when the other team doesn't score, that's good. So yeah. the Vikings had a great defensive performance. Uh, let's go over to uh, offense. Also, uh, some really bright spots. Yeah, very much so. Uh, you know, we, we switched some things up a little bit this week. We went with two tight end set. Uh, I thought Nick Lee played pretty well. Uh, Noah Heisman was our player of the game, played extremely well at the wideout position. Um, our running backs ran hard downhill. Our offensive line continues to improve and at times showed flashes of, of being really, really good. Um, we just got to be more consistent there. Uh, and I think our quarterback had a pretty good game. I think Trey Hyde you know, managed the game pretty well. We wanted to slow down the game, limit their offensive opportunities for them, um, and take shots when they were there. And, and he missed two of them, but he got three of them. So I was pretty pleased on, on his production as well. Well, and one of the leaders of the team, Noah Heisman, had a great game with six catches for 60 yards. He did. Yeah, and it was big for us to play well at wideout because their two corners were really good football players and have had quite a few turnovers on their own. And, and uh, we went after them. Yeah, threw one over their head and threw one in the seam. And, right. Um, you know, Noah was a part of that, so I'm really pleased. Yeah, okay, then the uh, last part of it, uh, another big week for the special teams. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, and I say this every week, but we put a lot of time into our special teams units because we believe we can't lose that phase of the game. All things equal, we have to win the special teams battle. Um, Desire, uh, our punt uh, block team has been very good. Coach Skolton's doing a great job with those kids understanding how to fit the screws and, and get in and make plays. Uh, two, buck, two block punts on the year, both for touchdowns. Uh, our kickoff unit 
Kendrick continues to be solid, keeping him within the 30-yard line. Um, even with Lucas uh, sh kicking a couple of them short this week and not kicking them out of the zone, we still held him back. Uh, we're going to take one of these kickoff returns to the house. I mean, we are one block away four different times, and it's just being consistent with all 11 kids, and one of those is going to spray as well. So, uh, you know, I couldn't be more pleased on special teams. Uh, you know, field position has been great, and the production from those units has been great, and we're using a lot of different people on those units as well. Well, it's been uh, super performance by the special teams. The Vikings, uh, three weeks into the season, were 2-1. and one. Uh, Coach, we mentioned some improvement here as you get ready for a tough trip to St. Cloud against a very good St. Cloud team undefeated. What's your focus this week? What do you think the Vikings need to get better at? You know, we need to get better at us. You know, it's going to start with us. It, it is going to be every week. We have to clean up the things that we're still not doing well. Uh, St. Cloud is a very good football team, and they have a ton of weapons on offense, and they use them. they got an experienced quarterback that knows their system and, and knows where to put the football. Um, they have a pretty decent offensive line, in my opinion, uh, and a running game to match. So defensively, we're going to have our hands full to create field position. Uh, offensively, you know, they're, they're a very veteran defense as well. Uh, very good linebacking core. Uh, secondary is exceptional. Uh, their down linemen move well as well. So we're going to have a great challenge. Another night game, another mm -hmm. long trip, but uh, we've done that already. So the new of that is over. Uh, I, I expect our kids to get better, you know, and, and give a good game to St. Cloud this week. And, and to be honest with you, I like our plan initially already at mm -hmm. this point, and we'll stay, we'll stay in the plan just like we did last week. Well, Coach OJ, uh, super win again last uh, Saturday. Good luck this week against uh, St. Cloud State. I was nervous for picture day. My mom let me pick up my outfit. She said, pick wisely. I stood in line with my friends. And then it was my turn. Next. There were big lights and a backdrop, and the picture lady said, wow, nice smile. And then there was this poof. I really like my picture. Whether you're in pain on Friday or get hurt on Saturday, injuries can happen any day of the week. Now you can walk right in for expert care at Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. We're the first to offer a walk-in clinic at four convenient locations, seven days a week with evening hours. Call 605-328-2663. Expert care when you need it. Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. Childhood cancer has a name and a face. Luxury Auto Mall of Sioux Falls and Children's Miracle Network at Sanford Children's Hospital ask you to join us in fighting this disease. Be bold. Wear gold. Because no kid fights alone. At Midcontinent, we believe in going the extra mile for you. Making sure your questions are answered. Getting every job done right the first time. Why do Mid-Continent Communications employees go out of their way for customers? Because that's how you treat a friend or neighbor. And to us, that's exactly what you are. Mid-Continent Communications, the connection that counts. We're back and with me now is Augustana volleyball coach, Ashley Buckley. Ashley, last week the Vikings had two matches at home. It started out on Thursday night against a nationally ranked Southwest Minnesota State team. Um, we started a little slow, we came back, we had opportunities, Ashley, but it was a good match. Yeah, we started out really slow. Out of serve receive, we got stuck in one rotation and unfortunately got a huge deficit early in the set. Um, and they came out rolling, I mean, they were playing really well. Uh, we looked like we were shell-shocked, I think, in the first set, so I was disappointed in our start. Um, but we talked about what we need to do in the second set to come back, to be better on our side of the net, um, and just to be patient, too, in realizing that they were playing going to play really good defense and they did play really well against us um, so it was a close close match we had opportunities I still think we're shooting ourselves in the foot at the end of mm -hmm. sets um, which isn't allowing us to give ourselves an opportunity to win them so overall a disappointing loss but Southwest played the best that we had seen them um, on the film that we scouted well uh, after that one the Vikings headed over to the Stewart Center at USF on Saturday afternoon got off to a great start won the mm -hmm. first two although all the, the, uh, the games uh, were close. And then uh, things just uh, didn't work out for us, Ashley, as we uh, came up a little short. 
Yeah, both teams played really well. It was an exciting match. Um, anytime you play every set a deuce game, you know that it's a really close game and it comes down to them the fine details. Um, the disappointing part of that match is, again, we had really slow starts in our sets, and that's not really typical of our team this season, but unfortunately we're getting stuck out of serve-receive, and then I don't think we're being aggressive enough on the end line. Um, so the combination of those two things led to them getting early leads on us. Um, but we did have some nice performances on offense from Courtney Isker and from Holly Halfmeyer. Um, I thought we had some nice production from Kelsey Kaufman on the right side and Cerberusi was much more consistent than it was against Southwest. So good things to take out of it, but at the end of matches we need to close the deal and we're giving ourselves a very narrow window of opportunity to win because of our slow starts. Well, I'm sure that'll be the focus this week. The Vikings uh, play Wayne State Tuesday night this week. We're actually filming this on Monday, so we're a little ahead of that, so you can catch up on that one through the media or goagi.com. This weekend the Vikings uh, are back home again as uh, two more NSIC matches. Uh, Friday night against the University of Mary, Saturday against Minot State. Yep. We're going to be excited to be back at home. That will be hopefully a good confidence booster for us. Um, we just know that every team that we play in this league is going to be good. And so, you know, although we're scouting teams and preparing for them, our focus really needs to maintain on our side of the net and what we need to do in order to win. So it'll be the same way going into Mary Minot. We have a big match coming up tomorrow, so we haven't talked a ton about those teams that we've seen Minot. Um, and they're excited to play, and certainly those teams are eager to win. Well, Ashley, you've talked a little bit about the, the focus here and what, uh, what I'm sure will be the emphasis this week. But, um, again, just a little bit more on how do you start those matches better or those sets better. Yeah, you know, I mean, serve-receive going uh, throughout preseason for us has been really strong. We've cited out probably at 66%, which is a good number to have. Um, but with that being said, we've been below those numbers for these two conference matches. And then on the end line, we haven't been strong enough to get teams out of system. So, you know, with them having two or three offensive options and being one-on-one -on -one certainly has been a downfall for us. So we're going to focus on things that we can control, like serving, mm -hmm. our serve-receive, and having better combinations and more diverse offense. Um, and then I think the emphasis needs to be on playing one point at a time. Right. At times we play them in chunks, and that's where we get ourselves into trouble. Okay. Um, the Vikings uh, at eight and two right now. The league again loaded like it always is nationally. I believe there are four uh, top 25 ranked mm -hmm. teams. Um, talk a little bit about the conference and what do you think needs to happen for us to have success? Yeah, every year we say it's really good. I think this year, quite possibly, the teams that have traditionally been in the lower part of the league are that much better this year, and the same suspects are up at the top of the mm -hmm. league, and so. Um, you know, Concordia, St. Paul, Duluth, Southwest, and Wayne are all teams that are right now ranked in the top 25. And what we're talking about is there's still a lot of conference play left in our season. We have 18 matches, and we'll certainly see all of those teams. Um, but we need to play consistent from, you know, match to match, whether we're playing the top team or the bottom team in the league. Um, in order for us to have a really good season. Well, Ashley, good luck in the matches this week uh, for the Vikings. And uh, when we come back, We'll visit with Augustana Vikings linebacker, Nate Kirby. See you soon. Have you noticed more and more fees showing up in your account with your bank? Take a look at your statement. You may be surprised. At Sioux Empire Federal Credit Union, the only surprise you'll find is how few fees there are. Imagine applying for your next loan or setting up your account with the peace of mind that as a member owner, you call the shots, including what fees to charge. So why let extra banking fees gobble up your money? Get your account and your loan from the place you own. Sioux Empire Federal Credit Union. Federally insured by NCUA. I was nervous for picture day. My mom let me pick up my outfit. She said, pick wisely. I stood in line with my friends. And then it was my turn. Next. There were big lights and a backdrop and the picture lady said, wow, nice smile. And then there was this poof. I really like my picture. Whether you're in pain on Friday or get hurt on Saturday, injuries can happen any day of the week. Now you can walk right in for expert care at Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. We're the first to offer a walk-in clinic at four convenient locations, seven days a week with evening hours. Call 
2663. Expert care when you need it. Sanford Orthopedic Fast Track. Combine Midco Net Extreme Wideband, the region's fastest internet, and Mid-Continent Video with TV everywhere, and take shows you normally watch here and watch them anywhere, anytime. So turn your tablet into a TV, take CNN with you, catch the Cartoon Network up here. Turn any screen in the house into a Mid-Continent screen. Mid-Continent Video with TV everywhere and the flawless streaming performance of Midco Net Extreme Wideband make Mid-Continent the connection that counts. Joining me now is outstanding junior linebacker, Nate Kirby. Nate, wonderful to have you on Augustana Sports Scene. You're coming off a great performance last Saturday against Bemidji State in which uh, the Viking defense uh, was outstanding. But before we get to talking football, let's go backwards. Um, address is Sioux Falls, if folks look in a program and all that. But actually, Nate went to Tri-Valley High School. Talk about mm -hmm. the days at Tri-Valley and why Augustana. Uh, I don't know, I, I couldn't really have had a better high school experience, had a great football team there too and great coaches and great friends, so had a, had a lot of close friends there. Uh, just wanted to stay, I really liked it. Augie and it's close to home, stay around here and I mean all my brothers are around here so they all get to come to the games and stuff, so it's good family atmosphere. Yeah, and it's been wonderful to have you here at, at Augustan as both a student and a football player. Well, the Vikings, 2-1 and one right now, coming off, as we mentioned, the shutout by the defense against uh, Bemidji State. First, your thoughts on your defense. How are we coming along? I w this last game really, uh, it's really summed up. I mean, we, we kind of let up a little bit. In the Minot game, we played good, and then in overtime, we, just, we didn't mm -hmm. show up like we have been playing all game. So it was great to see us come out, both not only as a defense, but as an offense, and play great both sides of the ball against Bemidji. Yeah, and it was a swarming defense, Nate, uh, six tackles. Uh, one and a half sacks, some other guys stepping up with big games as well. Really a, a team-oriented uh, defense, I'm sorry, which was great to see. Um, going back into the defense a little more, you play linebacker. What do you like about playing linebacker? I just, it's, a, it's a really physical game, and I mean, linebacker, you're always getting to hit somebody, get downhill, hit, playing in the run game and the pass game both. So. And then, I mean, my blitz got called quite a bit, it seemed like, in this last game, so they get to pass the rush quarterback, and I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, well, and you do a, a super job of it. Well, the Vikings uh, are heading into a tough one here at St. Cloud State this coming Saturday. Um, as you prepare for that one, what are your thoughts? I don't know, I haven't thought about it a whole lot. I mean, we got to, we'll watch film on uh, Bemidji and we'll get better off of that, and then I know the coach will have a great game plan ready for us, and just go off of that, get better every day. Okay, Nate. Well, you're a junior now. You redshirted uh, at Augustana. Uh, tell the folks out there your major and what you think you want to do. I'm an athletic training major, and then I'll hopefully go on to physical therapy school after that, and then uh, start making money. Oh, <laughs> well, that's good. Everybody needs to do that after they're done. Well, uh, you redshirted, as we mentioned. You've been around four years. You're kind of an old timer uh, here. Uh, reflect on what it's been like to be a football player and a student at Augustana. It's, it's been a great experience. It's went by extremely fast. I mean, I can remember coming in as a freshman, and it's been, I mean, ups and downs, changes with coaches and all that. And, but I'm really happy where I'm at right now. These coaches we got now are great guys, good guys to be around, and they, we got us going in the right direction. So. All right, Nate. Well, St. Cloud State Saturday, yes, big sir. season to go. Good luck to you and the team. Thank you. At Mid-Continent, we believe in going the extra mile for you. Making sure your questions are answered. Getting every job done right the first time. Why do Mid-Continent Communications employees go out of their way for customers? Because that's how you treat a friend or neighbor. And to us, that's exactly what you are. Mid-Continent Communications, the connection that counts. Expectations. Getting better every day. It doesn't happen by chance. Preparation pays off. So the only question to ask yourself is, am I better today than I was yesterday? Exceed yesterday. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.
Audi A4 drivers have spoken. And they rank the A4 highest in total quality index in its class. Experience the new Audi A4 at your local dealer today. Childhood cancer has a name and a face. Luxury Auto Mall of Sioux Falls and Children's Miracle Network at Sanford Children's Hospital ask you to join us in fighting this disease. Be bold, wear gold, because no kid fights alone. How do you hold a moment? Keep friends and family close. Witness the passage of time. Replay the glory days. Relive magical nights. Create memories to share. How do you capture a lifetime? One picture at a time. Life Touch. Photography for a lifetime. Let's take a look at the Augustana sports calendar for this week. Friday, September 27th, volleyball back home against the University of Mary, 7 p.m. at the Elman Center. Saturday, September 28th, a very busy day for Viking athletics with a lot of activity going on. Cross country is at the University of Minnesota Invitational in Minneapolis. Softball hosts their home tournament at Harmadon Park here in Sioux Falls. Women's soccer is home against Bemidji State at Morstead Field at 1 o'clock. And volleyball is also home against Minot State at the Elman Center at 4 o'clock. And the Augustana football team hits the road for a 6 o'clock game at St. Cloud State. Sunday, September 29th, women's soccer back home again against Minnesota Crookston, 1 o'clock at Morstead Field and softball completes play in their home tournament at Harmadon Park. And remember this Augustana athletic information. You can hear all Augustana football games on KIKN-FM 100.5 and worldwide at KIKN.com with Jeff Filling on the play-by-play. -play. And for complete information on Augustana athletics, go to our website, goaugie.com, where you can also get discount tickets for home athletic events at goagi.com slash tickets. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week for another edition of Augustana Sports Scene. So long, everybody. You have been watching Augustana Sports Scene, a weekly review of Viking athletics at South Dakota's largest private college. Learn more about Augustana College in Sioux Falls at augie.edu.